Warning, this review has some really lame jokes in it, so viewer discretion is advised. on my Play Choice 10 game specials, and I've decided to save the very best for last. I'm sure a lot of people out there remember the Goonies game for the NES, where you're traveling through doors to different lands and strange locations, all to save your kidnapped friends and a mermaid. However, that is not the game I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Goonies game. Now, some of you old school NES fanboys might be saying, yeah, that's it, the NES classic, The Goonies 2. Eh. Sorry, you would be wrong there. There actually was a Goonies 1 for the NES, only it never came out in America. Does that make a lick of sense to anyone? Seeing how it's a video game based on an American movie classic, there really is no explanation that I can find why it was never released to the American NES machines. My only guess is that the publishers thought it was too short on gameplay and people wouldn't want to buy it. They did think it would be fun enough to play in the American arcades, because the only place you could play the first Goonies game in America was the Play Choice 10. Now talk about the ultimate tease! I remember loving this game when I got to play it. I remember begging for this game for my birthday, and my parents got it for me, but they got me Goonies too, because we all thought it'd be the same game. I mean, why would the Play Choice 10 show us a game that we could never own? Oh, you want this game? Here, you can have it. No! <laughs> You'll get the more confusing sequel, and like it, America! <laughs> I do remember being utterly confused playing this title the first time because I couldn't remember having to deal with a mermaid when I was originally playing it. Then I remember feeling cheated and angry. It took me some time to warm up to the Goonies too, as it wasn't really a bad game, it just was a little bit confusing at times. But we'll get back to that one in a while. If you've never seen the Goonies movie before, what are you waiting for? It's fantastic. You know what? No. I'm gonna stay here while you go watch it. Go! No, not gonna do this review until you go watch it. Don't worry, I'll wait here. What? It's... It's been like 10 minutes. Go, go back to the movie. Yes, I will stay here. All right, now that you've done watching the movie, let's get back to the game. See, wasn't that worth it? But for those of you who just refused to watch the movie, I will give you a little bit of a summary. It's basically about a group of kids who finds One-Eyed Willie's treasure map and uses it to find his ship with all the treasure inside. All the while, they're on the run from a family of bad people named the Fratellis. Goonies the video game is a faithful retelling of that story. All the major locations that you see in the movie are in this game. From the restaurant you start your adventure in, to the caves and waterfalls, and even One-Eyed Willie's pirate ship shows up in the very last level. A great part about this game has to be the music. For background music, it has a really good mini version of Cindy Lauper's hit song, The Goonies Are Good Enough. You play the role of Mikey, who has to travel through six levels and rescue his six friends. In order to get past the level, you have to find three keys. These keys are located in safes that are scattered throughout the levels. Once you get three keys, you'll be able to take down the door that's blocking the exit. Even though that door only has one keyhole, go figure how that's gonna work. Plus, at each level, you can also rescue one of your friends, who's suffocating in one of the safes the Fratellis have put them in, hence the time limit of each of the levels. There's almost always more safes than keys, or goonies to rescue. So sometimes you'd open a safe and you'd only find a potion to increase your life or a new weapon. To make the game even harder, the safes that will have keys, weapons, potions, and goonies will randomly change each time you play the game. So it will never be as simple as always knowing where to go and what to do, which makes replayability very high on this title, since you're always playing something new. In order to get into these safes, you're going to have to use bombs to open them. You can find these bombs in the rats that are scampering around. I don't know why these rats are carrying around bombs, which are almost as big as them. I mean, look at them. They're huge. They're almost as big as Mikey himself. No wonder he can only carry one at a time. Now, like I said, you can only carry one bomb at a time, unless you find the backpack, but more on that in a second. You place the bomb by a safe, and then you'll need to walk away from it, because it will instantly kill you, or almost anything it comes in contact with, while it's slowly exploding. 
So you go from level to level, recreating the movie it's based on, all the while trying to fight off the Fratellis who are trying to stop you. To help you out, there are secret items you can collect. You can use them to not take damage from certain things, increase the amount of bombs you can carry, or even letting you warp ahead a level, if you can figure out how or where to use it. Hint, use the spring shoes in a place where you normally can't jump. Unfortunately, they're invisible until you make them visible by kicking underneath them. To find them, you just have to look for an area that doesn't really need to be there, and then just start kicking. Chances are you'll find something. Now, there are no regular continues, so it's three lives, then game over. There is, though, a secret continue that if you were smart enough to read the instructions on the PlayChoice 10, you'd know what it was, since it flat out says how to do the secret continue. Reading. It's not just for nerds now. If you don't rescue all your friends in each of the levels, then when you get to level 6, it'll kick you back to level 1. Basically saying, do it again, but this time don't screw it up. If you do end up rescuing all your friends up to the end of level 5, then you will go to level 6, which is One-Eyed Willie's Pirate Ship. It's a pretty small level. The only thing you do in this part is open chests until you find your final friend, who turns out to be a girl character. Ah, she looks so happy. Then the game ends with the gang and sloth, who never really shows up in the title other than in this ending screen, watching the pirate ship sailing away. And then the game resets it back to level 1. Did I just give away the ending? Yes, I did. While I am spoiling the ending, in context, it really doesn't make any sense if you've never seen the movie. Someone who's never seen the movie before is going to be like, there's a bunch of people holding hands at a beach looking at a boat floating away. Is that supposed to mean something to us? And no one's going to play this game for the story, so I figured why not let you see it. Like I mentioned earlier, there's also a sequel to the first Goonies game, aptly named Goonies 2. This one once again has you rescuing the Goonies, who seem to have a serious problem with getting kidnapped. Now you listen here, Goonies! Being kidnapped is my thing, not your thing! Now back off! Okay, there we go. Let's see. Yell at the Goonies. Check. Improve Rosalina's spaceship. Time to get the eggs. They're not the only ones kidnapped this time around, though. So does their friend Annie, who, by the way, is a mermaid. And, oh my goodness, is she topless? Nice, Konami. Way to sneak that one in. See, the only time you really see her is at the very end. So with her being a mermaid, you know that any sense of reason or logic is totally gone from this game. A mermaid? Really, Konami? I would love to know the backstory on how the Goonies met a mermaid. Now, this storyline is told to you in the form of a tape that the Fratelli sent to you. Oh my goodness, look at her eyes. They're like all over the place. You know she's evil when she's got crazy eyes like that. You know what's kind of sad? When I was a kid, I actually thought this was going to be the real storyline of the Goonies sequel. I kept thinking, this is going to be one weird sequel. Now, the graphics are improved from the first game, as are the weapons. This time, not only do you have bombs and slingshots, but you also have fire bombs and boomerangs to kill the enemies. This time around, the world is open to explore, as long as you have the right equipment. You could decide where you wanted to go and who you want to rescue first. I like the openness of the gameplay, but the problem with it was knowing where to go and what to do was usually pretty vague. There were doors you could go into, and it would change the action into a first-person perspective. You would use a list of options to choose what you can do in the room. Oftentimes, there were objects hidden out of sight, and you would need to hit an area to find them. So that meant you would need to constantly be hitting areas in any room you would come across. And to make things even harder, they sometimes make you hold a hammer to get the object, or to make something appear, which meant choosing the hammer, pressing hit, hitting the area where you want to search, then if you don't find anything, you have to re-choose the hammer, and then so on. This was definitely one of the things that I disliked liked most about this game. These dumb first person modes. While it does come with a map, it's not very useful. So you're gonna pretty much have to make your own. Because often you'll need to retrace your steps to find the objects you need to advance through the game. Unlike the first title, this time everything is the same. So you can get to a point where you'll always know where everything is and how to beat the game fairly easily. So replayability is a bit low on this one. But the game is still fun though. There is unlimited continues and a password system if you can't do it all in one sitting. So that's kind of nice. Like I said before, Goonies 1 is only available in America on the PlayChoice 10, but I'm always hoping that Konami will release it to the Virtual Console eventually, and if they ever do that, you should absolutely buy it. As for the Goonies 2 for the NES, I also hope it'll come to the Virtual Console, and of the two titles, I have a feeling that this one's the most likely to show up, since it does have a bit of a fan base, unlike the first game, and it is also worth a buy if it ever comes to the Virtual Console. Well, that's it! All the games I have for my Play Choice 10. I hope you guys have enjoyed the videos and I will. Hang on one second. Oh, hey guys. Yeah, come on. Just, just bring it in. You guys are going to love this.
Yeah, I own this one too. So I figured, why not put the NES game up against the arcade game? Not in a versus, but just kind of to show you what the differences are. So look for it next time.